Hello. So now I'm going to graph this equation. I'm going to do it in two ways. One is a naive way. Um, it's not too naive, but it's kind of a naive way. And the second way is going to highlight uh, function transformations. I want to show you both techniques because both techniques are completely appropriate. Both techniques are equally valuable. And, um, and also because I want you guys to be able to know both techniques well. Okay, we're gonna do lots of different examples like this, and um, but anyway, let's get started. So now, when I mean what I mean to say when I say a naive way is that I'm essentially gonna do a, a kind of variation on the theme of plugging in point plotting points. Now, this is not an altogether bad strategy, and of course, for complicated real life problems sometimes that's all you have um, but um but for this but for this kind of example we can use some insight and that's what i'm going to do here to make our take uh to to make a uh, smart effective choices about how to graph this function first of all we observe that it's a square root function and so we right off the bat we know that we can never let um the inside of the square root be less than uh, be less than zero. So x minus three can never be uh, can never be less than zero. Or in other words, it must always be greater than or equal to zero. Okay. So we know, for example, that adding three to both sides on this inequality, we see that x must be greater than or equal to three. Okay. So in, in essence, we've already gotten our domain here our domain will be from 3 to infinity, okay? Right, we did that because we observed that the inside of the square root could never be less than 0, it must be greater than or equal to 0. Solving the equality gave, solving this inequality gave us this result that the domain must be from 3 to infinity, okay? We know that um, We'll, 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 we'll refrain from discussing the range for the moment, but I'm going to notate that here because we are going to have to know that. Just, you know, for the sake of discussion, and it might be important uh, to know that fact, okay? Now, here's the thing. I'm looking at this square root. I could be, if I was going to be too naive, or um, what I would do is I would say, okay, I'm going to plot some points. I'm going to pick points at random. Uh, Maybe I already know not to go below three, but maybe not be so maybe not be so judicious. But we're not going to do that. We're going to think which points are the best for us to plot. Now, of course, if this function represented some physical situation, that would be a much more uh, reasoned idea about which points to pick. The points that correspond to the problem of interest, and the and the points in the function that correspond to particular. Uh, particular parts of the function that represent what you're representing in a, like, where you're worried about or where you're interested in, right? But for us, we just want the textbook drawing, right? Aha, uh -huh. so first of all, so if I want to take the square root of numbers, in our case, well, I'm going to take the square roots of perfect squares. So, uh, so perfect squares, okay? So let's think of them here for a moment. I'm going to make a list here. 0, 1, uh, 4, uh, 9, 16, etc. Right? I'm going to stop there. Okay. So if I want the inside to be 0, well, so now I'm going to make my table. Okay. So this is going to be my table of x's, and this will be my table of x of f's. Okay. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask what makes the inside of my square root 0. x minus 3 equals 0. I'm going to add 3, add 3, x equals 3, okay? So now, what is the function evaluated at 3? Well, the function evaluated at 3 will be the square root of 3 minus 3, right? 3 minus 3 plus 2, right? Plus 2 equals what is 3 minus 3 that's 0 
So this will be the square root of 0 plus 2. What's the square root of 0? Zero? 0. 0 plus 2? Two? 2. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the inside of the square root equal to 1 x minus 3 equal to 1. And again, why are we doing this again? Because by forcing the inside to equal perfect squares, it's going to enable us to graph this. Uh, it's going to enable us to get points that are nice to look at, that are easy to graph on a graph paper. x minus 3 equals 1, plus 3, plus 3, x equals 4. So now I'm going to evaluate my function at 4. My f at the input value 4 will be equal to the square root of 4 minus 3 plus 2. Okay. What's 4 minus 3? That's 1. So it'll be the square root of 1 plus 2. What is the square root of 1? 1. Why? Because 1 times 1 is 1. So this will be 1 plus 2, which is 3. Okay. 3, 1. Now, I'm going to calculate uh, what makes the inside equal to 4. So x minus 3 equals 4, right, to use this one. Plus 3, plus 3, x equals 7. Now I'm going to evaluate the function at 7. f of 7 is equal to the square root of 7 minus 3 plus 2. And then we say, okay, 7 minus 3. That's 4, of course, by design, plus 2. What's the square root of 4? 2. Why? Because 2 times 2 is 4. So it'll be 2 plus 2, which gives us 4. So f of 7 is 4. Wait a minute, what happened here? Something's wrong here. Ah, this was 4. Yes. I apologize about that mistake on the table. Let me just recap what just happened there. Why was it 4? Because that was when I set the inside x minus 3 equal to 1. That became x equals to 4 when I added the 3 over. So the x equals the 4, and then I plugged it in again. f of 4 is equal to the square root of 4 minus 3 plus 2. 4 minus 3, that's the square root of 1 plus 2. The square root of 1, of course, is 1, because 1 times 1 is 1, plus 2, 3. So yes, the x equals 4, the y equals 3 there. I apologize about that, and I hope you guys, uh, yeah. Now, as you already are aware, we're going to ask ourselves what will make the inside equal to 9. So I'm going to find out. I'm going to add 3, add 3. x equals 12. Okay. Now I'm going to calculate my function at 12. That'll be the square root of 12 minus 3 plus 2. By design, this is going to be the square root of 9 plus 2. So we're using this one. The square root of 9 is 3. Why? Because 3 times 3 is 9. Plus 2 equals 5. Now let's stop right here because you can see if you use 16, if we want to make this equal to 16, it's going to be 19, and it's going to be hard to graph on a graph paper. Okay. And now let's graph it together. Now, as I look at these values, you can see that the portion of the x-axis that I want to focus on, I must have the values from 3 to 12, and for the y values, I only need like from 2 to 5. So let's do that here, okay? Let's say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And one, two, 
one, two, three, four, five. So at the x value three, I'm gonna go up two, right here. At the x value four, I'm gonna go up three. I'm gonna be right there. I apologize that I'm in the way while I graph it. It's just, I wanna do a good job. As good as can be done. Uh, x value seven, y value four, so I'm gonna go along the x seven, and then four up, like about right there. Okay, hope I'm like, yeah, that's about right. And then at the x value 12, I'm gonna go up five. So at the x value 12, oops. About right there, I believe. And you can see that it's going to be connected like this, right? And of course, yeah, it shouldn't look bendy like that. It should, as you guys know, it should look like this, okay? Like, like smooth. But of course, because I'm drawing it by hand, the points are not exactly right. And also my hand doesn't stay like steady. Uh, so, but I wanted you to see that that's what it looks like. And of course, it'll continue going up like that forever. And uh, let me just label these. And now I want to show you what the range is going to be. The range is going to be from the y value 2 upwards. So from 2 to infinity. Okay. And that's how we graph this using the relatively naive approach. It wasn't too naive. You can see we used our brains to select a good choice of x's for it. Uh, we evaluated the function to get the associated y's. And then we plotted the function uh, using uh, using the rx y values that we got from the graph. It was easy to determine the domain because we knew that the only restriction on the domain of this function came from the fact that there was this square root uh, this square root function. And, I mean the square root portion of this function and we remembered that as far as functions from the reals into the reals if we have a square root we can only we can we can we, we can only have x that make the inside of the square root greater than or equal to zero and that allows us to find the domain then the range we can see graphically from the shape of the function that it's going to go from two upwards okay now when we do it using transformations I'll be able to give you a much more uh, insightful discussion of why the range must be this. Okay? Thank you, and I uh, hope you enjoy it, and yeah.